Hello and happy Valentine's Day. Um, in case you are like, I didn't do anything for Valentine's, head on over. And when you grab my February lesson plans, I also have Valentine writing activities and a Valentine poem. So you can just go and hurry and act like you prepared something really big and amazing. So you can go to coachmegthomas.com and you'll see a link right there either for shop or you can go directly to my picture where it says grab February's lesson plans. So you can go and do that. All right, friends, are you familiar with a high jump? According to Wikipedia, it says the high jump is a track and field event in which competitors must jump unaided over a horizontal bar placed at measured height, heights without dislodging it. You've probably seen pictures of someone doing a high jump with them throwing their back over the bar. But did you know that that was not always the way how people did the high jump? Before 1968, people jumped forward or sideways. Some of the techniques were the straddle or the split. Well, there was a man named Dick Fosbury, and he competed in the high jump. He um, wasn't very good at it, actually, and he started experimenting with different jump techniques at 16 because he had difficulty doing the jump in the traditional ways and would fall when he tried to jump five feet or 1.52 meters, which was the qualifying height for the high school track meets. Fosbury later said, I knew I had to change my body position, and that's what started the first of the revolution, and over the next two years, the evolution. Again, from Wikipedia, it says, gradually, Fosbury shifted his positioning during the jump, such that by his senior year, he'd begun to go over the bar backward, headfirst, curving his body over the bar and kicking his legs up in the air at the end of his jump. This required him to land on his back. But prior to his junior year, his high school had replaced its wood chip landing pit with a softer material so he was able to land safely. Fosbury's coaches at first encouraged him to continue practicing the straddle method, but they abandoned that idea when his marks continued to improve. In his junior year, he broke his high school record with a six foot three inch or 1.91 meter jump, and the next year took second place in state with a six foot 5.5 inches jumps or 1.969 meter jump. Eventually, Fosbury made it to the Olympics, and in 1968, he won the gold medal and set a new Olympic record, 2.24 meters or seven feet, four and a quarter of an inch. At first, people didn't know what to think of his method, but it is now called the Fosbury flop and is still currently used in today's high jump. Friends, why in the world am I telling you this really cool story? Well, it's usually because I had a conversation with somebody that got me thinking and I needed to get my thoughts out and my podcast is the place to do it. We were hanging out with some people the other night and they were being very polite and asking me questions about my kids, homeschool, college, and all the things. Now, before you think this person was being rude or anything like that, this person has been nothing but polite to me about homeschooling. And if they disagree with me or think I'm crazy, they have never said anything and have never treated me unpoorly. So these things that they said or questions they had were genuinely just different thoughts and curious things they wanted to know about. So anyway, this person starts talking to me about all the things and starts the question of testing comes up. And friends, to be honest, Testing is also is almost as silly to me now as the socialization question, and I can get on my uh, soapbox just as easily about testing as I can on socialization. So here I go. But they started to ask about testing and were genu genuinely shocked that I don't test my kids. So it's interesting because I have not been getting a lot of homeschool questions and worries about my kids now that I have adult children that people have seen, oh, Meg's done it with all um, her big kids and they've done all the grades and they've made it through that most people are like, oh, what I may disagree, but what she's doing is actually working. So I don't get a lot of comments like this very much. So it, it made me giggle and it really caught me off guard. So they were asking, how are my kids ever going to get into college? How do they, um, how are they evaluated? How do you know where they are? How will I learn? How will they learn how to pass a test? And I found this whole experience 
so interesting, probably because the person was so shocked and genuinely like, I cannot believe you do not test your children. It reminded me how people were trying to do a high jump by doing what everyone else was doing because that is the way that things have always been done. Been done. And it wasn't until Dick Fosbury said that he wanted to try to do something different than the high jump completely changed. And what's interesting is that he couldn't do the jump the way everybody else was doing it. And so even when he was starting to have success jumping back backwards that his coaches tried to encourage him to switch back to the way that it's always been done. But then he was doing such a good job that they were like, I guess we'll just let him go ahead and do it. And I find that so interesting when people have, see somebody going against the grain and they're like, you need to go back with the grain. You need to be with the herd. You need to be swimming with all the fish or like panicking, get back in the cave with the rest of us, even though I'm having success with my kids. My kids are doing amazing things that they're really awesome. There's still this part of them that thinks, oh no, you have to do it the way that it's always been done. And I find that fascinating. So I kind of laughed when I answered this person because I haven't had a question like this in a really long time. And it's pretty obvious to me that what I'm doing is working. So the thought of testing my kids seems absolute, absolutely ridiculous to me. But I wanted to answer the questions here on the podcast of, of what she asked me and what I said, but I will definitely expound on it here because this person's mind was being blown. So they asked, how will my kids ever get into college? Which is hilarious considering the fact that two of my children already had their associates. My third, uh, third child is, um, finishing his associates right now. My, let's see, am I saying it the right order of the fourth? So it's the fifth child, but of the, of the fourth of my children, if that makes sense, um, is in the middle of getting her college degree and she's 15. Um, my oldest was my only one to not do the same route. Um, but he just finished a semester of college and doing something different. So how will they ever get into college? Well, friend, they're already in college and some of them already have their associates. But what I answered and just said, um, they will transfer as a junior. So that is what my kids did. So none of, I guess my oldest did take the ACT, but none of my other ones have taken the ACT, nor do I care to do anything like that because they just get to transfer as a junior. Also, two of my kids are currently in, um, well, they both tried a local university and neither of them liked it. So they switched to a program called BYU Pathway and they both really, really love that. So they, those two are currently getting their um, bachelor's degree. So it was so funny to me that, that this, this question was even asked because <laughs> two of my kids have their associates. The third is almost about to have it. Two of them are getting their bachelor's degree. And also, I don't even think you have to go to college. Like this is just the path my children have chosen. Um, I think education is awesome. And I think a college degree opens up doors, but it is not something that I have required or forced my children. This is just a path that they feel like is best for them. So super interesting. So my children, the question about how will my children ever get into college, I felt was silly because they have either already in college or have already done college. So that was silly to me. Another question was, how will I evaluate them? So first of all, what? <laughs> Why in the world do I need to evaluate them? Can you imagine if someone came in and evaluated you on how you're doing as a woman, as a mother, as a wife, that they checked and tested you on your level of cleanliness? Let's see you scrub a toilet and I'm going to test you on it and judge you and, and I will evaluate how you're doing. I'm going to evaluate how good of a mom you are. Oh, you lost your cool a couple times this week. That's a, that's a lot of points right? Like that would be so ridiculous. We don't do this to adults where maybe in a job setting where they have to do evaluations based on performances or something like that. But in life, within relationships, within friendships, with all these different things, we don't do this. So how silly to think that my children would need to be evaluated. On the flip side, I am with them every stinking day. I know, I know my kids. I know their strengths, their weaknesses. Um, I know where they are in what subjects. I know what's easy for them. I know all of those types of things because we are together all the time. Um, so I answered her with just that we'll work together a lot. And so 
I know, I know where everybody is, which was the next question was, how do you know where they are? They are same thing with the evaluation because we are together all the time. I just know where they are. And I love that. I can know that some of my kids, um, don't like math. And so we would go really slow and we did have a lot of fun with it and we would just relax, but we'd focus on their strengths. Guess that one of my darlings loves math. So we did a lot more math and it was really fun and really challenging because they liked this. And it's so interesting that with kids we're like, they have to know everything. But as an adult, we can say like, oh, you don't enjoy that. You don't have to do that then. Or, um, you can hire it out or you like, you just don't have to do it all those types of things, but we're like, all kids must know this. And we do not require adults to live at the same standard. So I find that whole idea silly. So this was the last one. How will they learn to pass a test? Now, uh, this one, I said, they will learn to pass a test when they need to take a test. And my daughter, who is 15, did not take her first test. She's taken one test and uh, it was her first test. And it was to get her learner's permit. I showed her how to study. I showed her what to do. We gave her practice exams and guess what? She went and took the learner's permit test and she passed it. So if my kids ever do need to take a test for any reason, and it's interesting because with um, the associates program they did, there weren't tests. There were, was a lot of writing, but they were not being tested. And now the program that they're in now, my boys do have some tests where they have to do, where they have a writing assignment or they have a math quiz or something like that. And I just got a message from one of them like, hey, 100% killing it, right? So like they figured out how to test when they needed to test. I don't know why a small child needs to be tested all the time. Um a very quick Google search of testing and how reliable it is quickly pulled up so many credible sites. I just mean like they weren't some angry mom blogger, right? But a credible site of why standardized tests don't even show a child's intelligence. A quote by Diane Ravitch, hopefully I said that correctly, says sometimes the most brilliant and intelligent students do not shine on standardized tests because they do not have standardized minds. And one of my favorite quotes from Einstein is, everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. I believe that tests often just show us how well a child takes a test or how well they memorize. But it is also causing unnecessary stress and anxiety in children. It's so interesting when you go and look up how much more anxious kids are now, how much more stressed they are. And then this level of uh, test and drive and all these things that we are trying to require, require smaller children to do, it, it's hurting them and it's not doing anything. And it doesn't show you how intelligent you are, how well you know something. A lot of times, um, think about your own education background, if you went to public schools or whatnot, even any type of school where you had to test on something and then you forgot it right? Um, I was not a star student. <laughs> I I tried to see how little I could go to school. And actually the time I went during my senior year and I wanted to see how little I could go to school and I had more absences than times I went. And that was my only 4-0 ever. And so I was like, oh, oh, I just need to learn how to pass your class. Like I don't even have to learn how to take a test well. I just need to know what you want to know or if you want cookies or something like that. And that's how I pass a class, right? And so it's so funny to me that somebody doesn't take a test and they're like, wow, I know so much about this. But often it's usually like, oh, great, I'm done with this. I don't have to do this ever again. Um, so I could just get on my soapbox forever about testing. Because I just see so many people study for a test, pass it, forget everything about it, or get anxious over it, or beat themselves up and think that they're stupid or something like that. And I don't care to put time into our homeschool education, into helping my kids to pass tests. But instead, I want to put my time and energy, first of all, of connecting with my kids and having a good time because it goes by so stinking fast, um, but helping my children develop a love for learning becoming a lifelong learner and knowing how to figure something out. So if they are in a situation where they do need to take a test for something, if it's something to further their career, or if they do want to go to college or something like that, I would rather teach them how to figure things out and get really good at that so that no matter what comes their way, they're like, oh, I, I've never taken a test before, but I know how to learn things. I can Google it. I can watch on YouTube. I can do all of these different things and I can figure it out. Ultimately, 
you get to do what feels best for your family. And you may be saying like, Meg, I actually like Tess. And that is what is so awesome about homeschooling is you get to be the steward over your children. You were called to be their parent for a reason. So if you're like, I kind of disagree with you, that's totally okay. Um, obviously I get really worked up about testing. Um, I just, it's to me, there's, there's a silliness to it, but if you're like, it feels good to me and I like it and I actually am okay with testing, be prayerful, be very intentional, but ultimately you get to decide what is right for you. But I want to challenge you to not just keep doing what everybody was doing, like in the high jump where everybody just kept jumping forward and trying different ways of just jumping over the bar forward. But instead, maybe thinking, like, I can do this a little bit different. And as we've watched world records just be beaten because somebody dared to do it a different way. And maybe it's time to let go of these standardized tests or things like this that our kids aren't really remembering anyway. And maybe it's time to just help them develop a love for learning. And so they want to know things and they want to try and and live a life where the, it is just full and enriching. Love you so much. I would love to hear your feedback of what you think about tests. You can either comment on social media, send me an email. Um, I would love to hear your feedback of what you think about tests and whether or not you think that your homeschool kids should be tested. Okay. Have a good one, friends. Talk to you next week.